Good morning, Living Waters. Welcome back. Uh, I hope this week uh, you're being convinced about the power of community. Even if it's not always a perfect utopia, like described in Acts 2 yesterday, of course. We turn today to Hebrews chapter 10. And you know, Hebrews is actually kind of the perfect, the perfect video, um, or the perfect book for uh, coffee together. Because how does Pastor Zach get his coffee? He brews it. <laughs> All right, with that, it's almost Friday. It's almost Friday. Uh, the verse uh, to Hebrews 10, 23 through 25. Here we go. And I want you to hear... Hebrews is, I think, a book that is complicated and therefore underappreciated. Because it does take a little understanding of what's going on. But also, it's a heavy book. There's a lot going on. And if we view it as theological constructs being laid out, you know, a little like mini theses, if you will, you know, like a PhD candidate would write. Um, so they're little vignettes of actually deep theologies. I want you to hear in this three verses here a, a, a theological claim of connecting two important aspects of our faith, okay? Let's see if you catch it. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful. And let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. Okay? So surely, surely, you heard the power of community in verses 24 and 25, right? Um, provoking one another. I love that. Provoke. It's not encouraging one another to love and good deeds. Provoke. It's in your face, right? Uh, you know, ch almost challenging each other to, to love and do good deeds. Remember, love's an active verb in these passages, okay? Um, so, you know, you won't, you won't do this. It's just a challenge provoking each other. Okay, so love that. Um, but also meeting together, um, encouraging one another. There's encouraging, you know, it's important to, um, again, community helps us uh, do good in the world. It enables us, it provokes us. It also encourages us and takes care of each other. Okay, that's great. But what was the first verse? Verse 23. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. He being Jesus. Um, <clears throat> hold fast a confession. That sounds very churchy, right? It sounds like something maybe Martin Luther and the Reformers would have said. That we hold fast to the confession of our hope. Right? It, is, it is keeping the faith. It's in these hard times especially. Holding fast to the confession of our hope. Holding fast to our faith in the hard times. It's not easy work. And notice, together, okay, I, when I hear that, I think of holding on to our faith, right? It's an individual thing. It's my faith. I have to hold on to it. I have to do the, the, care, the job to take care of it. I got to... Um, you know, make sure to have coffee, Pastor Zach, so I get my Bible study in and and hear the good news for the day. I guess I have to drag my butt to church or get up in time to watch the live stream or whenever. I have to I have to find time to to worship. I uh, you know, I gotta I gotta give enough money, I gotta volunteer enough things, right? It's all on me. But that's not what Hebrews says. That holding to the confession of our hope, the power of our faith is inherently tied and, right, conjunctions, English. This is even, we don't even need translations. It's in the English. And let us consider how to provoke one another. They're connected. Community is part of us holding fast to the confession of our hope. Community is part of how our faith is nurtured in the hard times. And it shouldn't be surprising Look at anything else in our life. It's easier, to, to, usually, uh, with a group. Like, you know, I wait, take weight loss. You know, I know it's not January. This will be very topical in January. But, you know, with New Year's resolutions, it's always, all the experts tell you, it's easier if you have a, a group. 
hold each other accountable. You provoke each other to work out, right? It's the same thing with our faith. If it all falls on us, then it all falls on us. I don't know about you, that might not always be a good thing. I don't always make the best decisions in the hardest times. Maybe you do. But then we need you in community then, if you're uh, perfect. <laughs> I'm kidding, you're not. No, I'm sorry. But it doesn't fall on us. We have community. We have someone to lean on when the times are hard. We have someone to provoke us when we get complacent. We need that community. We need to be together for our faith to grow. That's what we talk about uh, when raising their kids in the faith. The whole community is part of that process. It doesn't just fall on the parents. At baptisms, the whole congregation promises to help them raise that child in the faith. It takes all of us. We're stronger together. We'll wrap up tomorrow this wonderful theme. It's all over scripture, all over it. And one more surprise for you tomorrow.